I'm your host, Emily Hagan, and I am in Beverly Hills tonight at the first annual Mixnology event. Tonight, we've gathered business professionals from all over Los Angeles to come and speak about all of the brands that they've built. We're going to be talking to people in the virtual reality department, actors, writers, and producers, and CEOs that have built their brand from the ground up. So let's go talk to some entrepreneurs and business professionals and maybe do some networking ourselves. you said that stood out to me it was about how people told you no but you kept going because you're like you know what I'm a strong woman and I can do this yeah um, well growing up you know I just had a lot of people that were saying you know stay in school you're you're so educated you're so smart why do you want to be an actress and, and I was like this is my passion and this is what I'd love to do so why can't I go ahead and pursue that and make that something successful and not allow what they told me to deter me from pursuing my dreams. What were some of like the early obstacles when you decided to take that leap into your next venture? Yeah, early obstacles. Um, doubt. Do not let doubt get in the way of your dreams. Um, How did you not let it get in the way? Well, by consuming a lot of amazing content uh, to go to put yourself on a mental diet and literally consuming the best of the best because people go on regular diets all the time but they forget to feed the one thing that's getting the rest of your body going. I like how you talked about how social media is important as well as your craft. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the other people were really pushing the social media. And I have to say, there's still a world in which we do live where actors and actresses do get cast based on their own merit. So I wish that they kind of pushed it a bit more up there. That the social media is important in some ways, but there are still plenty of jobs to get where it doesn't matter if you have that backing or that presence in the social media world. Here's the thing, as an actor, even a working actor is not working all the time. And you can sort of sit around and wait between jobs or you can sort of take control of your own life and create your own opportunities. So um, almost 20 years ago, actually 25 years ago, while I was on the Mickey Mouse Club as a kid, I was also working behind the scenes. So I started off with that mindset. What did they have you doing behind the scenes as a young kid? Yeah, it was crazy. I was 15, 16. Water boy? Yeah, right, right. It was crazy. I was 16 years old and I asked to write and produce the theme song, for instance. Really? Yeah, and they let me do it. What I liked about what you, she mentioned at the panel, she was talking about Minnie Kaling and how she kind of carved her own career. And I feel like as women, that's kind of what we need to do these days. Yeah. No, you do, you have to create your own opportunities. I mean, I came to LA uh, almost 13 years ago. I didn't know anyone. I know, I've been, I'm like a lifer. Yeah. And uh, you know, you just have to go down whatever path, whatever opportunity you get. I wanted to come here, I wanted to write and act. And I fell into production, but I learned so much on set, met so many people, and then I moved on to acting and writing. But I think when you come here, whatever opportunity presents itself, take it because you don't know where it'll lead. Is this your first time? Yeah, this is my this is my first time being in, the, in an event in Beverly Hill because I'm actually a film composer from Seattle, and I recently moved down here for work after I get my second master's from Seattle Film Institute for film scoring. I'm so happy that they added the virtual reality to the panel because it's a lot different process than acting or writing or some of the other things. It's a whole different, I think you have to tap into a whole different part of your brain. In VR, there is a lot of creativity. Yeah. I mean, what VR is today is not all that different from where it was 20 years ago. But we've come to a point where a lot more artistic expression is possible in VR. Nobody has the right answer of how to create, like there's no VR medium yet that people have like a firm grip on. There's no grammar to VR yet. People are still trying to establish it. And so there's a lot of creativity and resourcefulness just in trying to understand um, what the palette is like. How do you create in VR? How did you get involved with virtual reality? 
Um, I was given a creative prompt by Weaver, who uh, collaborated with us on the on our project that's coming out in Halloween. What's Weaver? Weaver is one of the uh, distributors of VR and studios right now, working out of Venice Beach. And they came to me as a director and said, hey, we have something we'd like to try. Do you have any creative you could pitch? And the rest is history. You had a different route when you started your journey. How did you go from wanting to do the screenwriting and the acting to this? Oh, I'm still screenwriting. Um, I use this, these events as a way to connect with professionals. You added a virtual reality panel tonight. What's up with that? First time ever. Part of it is because I know nothing about it. Neither. And I want to know about it. But virtual reality is the future of storytelling, in my opinion. So there's going to be a lot of, I believe, a lot of virtual reality um, shows in the future. Yeah. Well, it's been another wonderful event. We've learned so much from the panel. This time we've learned a lot about aging and managers and representation, along with all of the new technology for the virtual reality. Now, you can take advice from anyone you want, but at the end of the day, I think the message here today was just to listen to yourself, keep with it, and if this is really what you want to do, just stick with it. I'm Emily for Click on This, and we'll see you next time.